Now, if you're making any vacation plans and have a few million dollars to spend, why not take a trip into space? Well, who would, wouldn't want to take a trip that's out of this world? Dr. Jose Lopez is our science guru. We're here to talk about how the tourism and technologies industries are looking at space as the final frontier. Well, the, Welcome. the tourist frontier, they're looking to commercialize it, Brian, exactly, at this point. Exactly, and there's a lot up there already. We've got satellites, all kinds there's, of things. Th there are over 20,000 satellites that have been put up there over since the 1957, since Sputnik. And of those 20,000, there's a, a, a lot of them are space junk at this point, which is a big problem we have out there. But there's about 4,000 or so that are active, and their telecommunication satellites, our global positioning satellites, all of those things are out there. So we've already been commercializing since the late, the early 60s, late 50s. Mm -hmm. But there, okay, l l let's let's take a step back and talk about what the implications are when you talk about commercialization of out outer space. You know, we talked about taking flights into space, which is something that companies are offering. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, uh, Virgin Atlantic uh, or uh, Virgin America is now going to be Virgin Galactica. So they're going to be sending flights up. <laughs> I mean, up. this is real. This is not, <laughs> this is, this this is is not is making real. this up. Uh, Boeing and uh, a lot of the uh, uh, companies that make airplanes are now looking at making uh, sh space shuttles. So what, what are they going to have? And I don't mean to be trite here, but are, what, are they going to have space hotels? I mean, yeah, that's that's the next thing. We have an international space station. There will be they're looking to there are companies looking to build hotels up there the, where you would go take your Virgin Galactica up there, dock for a little while, spend a few days, and then come back. Exactly. Vacation for the, I would imagine, super rich and super wealthy, rich. though. Yeah. Well, the, the current price is $40 million, and you can, uh, and the Russian space program will take you up to the International Space, uh, space wow. Station. So, has anyone done it yet? Yeah, it's been done by multiple people, uh, 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 quite a few people. I think about a dozen or so multimillionaires have done it already. So who stands to benefit from this? Um, you know, so much funding was cut to NASA. Right. We're not doing uh, our launches anymore. Um, so, you know, what, what are the benefits here? Well, I mean, the, the, it's been a conscious decision by, the, by our government, by the federal government, by the Obama administration to uh, have space be commercialized, have all of the companies now, instead of having NASA work directly with other companies to build stuff, they want the entire world, basically, or every, every other uh, companies to, to work directly with uh, customers, people who will pay to, to go up there. Sure. So well, NASA is now one of the customers. That, that's been a trend uh, using the military and what the military comes up with to uh, transform that into a civilian use and making money on it. They've been doing yeah. that since the yeah. 60s. Well, the GPS was uh, the global positioning satellites were put up there for military use and now they're, they're used for uh, yeah. For, for, for anybody can buy a hundred dollar GPS. The video game industry, as I understand, right. that started as a test pilot, test training for pilots. Yes. So uh, there's a lot of that The internet going on. too. You know? Wow. <laughs> All right, so if you're going into space, how far up are we talking? How far are we going? We're, we're talking, uh, um, we're talking of about uh, 60, 70 kilometers up into space. Okay. That is what we can do now. Yeah. You can go beyond that. Like halfway to the moon? Can you give no, us No, no, not that far. No, okay. so, so, so the International Space Station is about 100 kilometers up. Okay. So, right. so it's not that far out. And doesn't that present some scientific challenges when you're talking about taking? I mean, it's one thing to take two or three guys up, but taking a plane load of people, yeah. especially with the luggage that I carry on. <laughs> 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 right, and and yeah, absolutely. And and then uh, eating food in space is very difficult. Um, putting clothes on in space is going to be very difficult. There's zero gravity there, so th it, a, a whole bunch of problems are going to come about. How, how do you manage it, just the food issue alone in space? I mean, it's not like you can take a steak up there. Right. Yeah, you can't take a steak up there. You, you can't crack an egg there and, and expect to, to fry it on a, on a pan. So food, food right now, what they do for the International Space Station is they, they make the food down on Earth, then they bring it up in little packets, and they basically put water in it, hydrate it, and then they just kind of eat it out of little bags. And there's got to be all kinds of training that you have to go through before going into yes. space. I mean, astronauts spend a lifetime preparing, and now just any old tourist with 40 million can go up there <laughs> go up for there. how long? No, they, they actually do train. They, okay. they, they go, they spend about a year and a half training. Oh, they really? Have. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, they, they don't just throw them up there. But, uh, and, and then they stay up in the space station from uh, a, a few weeks, oh. a few months. Some wow. of them have stayed up there. And then there's maintaining oxygen for all of those people. Right. Does that require carrying a whole lot more equipment? Yeah, the, so, so, so they, they have to bring oxygen up there and then different facilities that you need, you know, to, so, oh, so there's, sure. there's so there's many, many other things. The obvious facilities. That, <laughs> right, yeah. that are necessary. I've got one other thing I want to get in. Um, is it true about mining for asteroids? I've heard about yes. James Cameron, you <laughs> yes. know, Titanic, you know, he's gone underground. Uh, 
are there Google is actually yes. looking into Go the mining for yes the founders resources. of Google are are uh, and James Cameron uh, um, of t Titanic Terminator fame right. are um, have put money as venture capitalists into a company that will send robots to asteroids to mine them for precious metals and precious resources uh, gold and nickel whatever whatever is there I mean we're running out of resources on Earth so. We might wow. be going out into space and so taking it. So the sky is no longer the limit. The sky is no longer the limit, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Dr. Lopez, we thank you so much thank for taking you. the time <laughs> to come onto the show. Always interesting and fascinating conversation. Fascinating stuff.